Hello again. I apologize for the last video for being so long. It was so much to cover in regards to the hardware. I tried to go through it quickly and get as much in there as I could. Um, take your time, read through that, because the hardware is important. It can be one single part on a computer that causes the whole thing to be trash. And when you can identify that and be able to use the right terminology, then you're able to be able to go in there and possibly fix it, or at least know, hey, this is how much I'm willing to pay or the cost. It's important that you take a few minutes and understand the, the hardware of a computer. And whether you're a computer programmer, a networker, or a person that repairs or just use a computer, the more knowledge you have, the more it empowers you. And so understanding the basics of hardware helps to empower you with your computer. We're moving on though, we're gonna talk about peripherals. We talked about that last week. I wanna again, encourage you, watch the video, pay close attention. Let's look at the text though. There is a quiz, so pay attention. All right. Basically, on a, on a computer, the peripherals are the things that are outside the case, the things that are attached to it, but they're on the outside that you can physically touch and handle. Input are the devices that inputs data into the computer. And it's really important you understand this. Uh, a keyboard is an input device. I'm typing on that keyboard, data is going into the computer. The mouse is an input device. As I move my mouse, I'm telling the computer what I want it to do. Um, you've got your left click, your double left, your right, your center. Some of those, actually, the rolling wheel can click down. There's a lot of, and then, oh my, you've got your gaming mice, which have just hundreds of buttons on them to do many different things. You've got your game controllers, a webcam. Again, this is input because I'm sitting here, I've activated the webcam, it's recording what I'm doing. That is input. Now, a CD, if it can only read, then it is an output device. I'm sorry, input device, excuse me. If it can only read the CD, it is only an input device. But if it's a read-write, then it's both, it's input and output. Keep that in mind because that's an excellent test question. Output devices. These are devices that, puts, that give you something in return. A printer is a great example of an output device. The old printers are called the dot matrix. And they were originally, they had tiny little pins that would hit down on a uh, ink ribbon, and that would give you the letter. And so you would have eight to 30 different pins, and the higher number of pins, the more expensive the printer was, but the better quality. Basically, though, that quickly phased out because they then developed the laser, and then from there, the inkjet. Now you have the 3D printer. That is amazing what they can do with the 3D printer. And hopefully we can learn more about that. Monitor, that is another output device. You see the output from the computer there on your screen. You see what I'm doing from the, the screen. It's outputting. Okay. I'm back. I apologize. I had a teacher that needed some assistance. And so we took a brief moment there to fix that. Um, let's get back to where we were on the, we were talking about the monitor and um, monitor typically is output. However, if it is a touch screen monitor, then now it's input and output. And if you wanted to get real technical, you could say that it's a layer, uh, a screen that's on top of the monitor that allows it to be uh, an input device. But in general, we'll just say it's both input and output. Many of you get to experience that 
touchscreen feature on your Chromebooks. So that's the concept there. Speakers are output. A microphone, however, is input. So don't think that, well, but I can tell Alexia or Alexis or Siri, Siri what I want. Well, but that's the microphone that may be built into or attached to the speakers. Connecting your peripherals, um, the PS2, those are really, really, really outdated. But I remember them. And yes, they were easy to get crossed over. They wouldn't always work. And the biggest problem with them were the metal pins that would go into these connectors. They would get bent. And there was many times a perfectly good mouse was trash because the pins would bend and you couldn't do anything with it. And the same with the uh, DA15, the DA9. There was a bunch of those things. And even to this day, anytime you've got something with a small pin on it like that, if it gets bent, bent, it's really hard to work with. Many times you'll see your um, HDMI cables where that little metal jacket's pulled off and you've got all these little pins sticking out of it. Well, it's trash. You're not going to really be able to fix that. So keep that in mind. Um, device drivers. In the, in the, a long time ago, when you would get a device, you would get it with a floppy disk and then later a CD that had the drivers. The drivers were the instructions that told the computer how to work with that device. And it could even be simply as a keyboard. You may have to download the drivers for that keyboard, but especially for like something, a CD-ROM drive, uh, you would need those drivers. Anymore, that is something that they just don't send out. Those CDs, they cost money, they easily break, they, it's very little amount of data that would have to be on it. They've gotten really cheap on that. And to them, they're like, hey, if you want to install this hardware, this device, this peripheral onto your computer, then you're going to have to hook that computer up to the internet and we'll download the drivers off the internet. The advantage is anytime they come up with, a, they rewrite the code, update the driver, then you don't have to go out there and get another CD because it just downloads off the internet. Years ago, the internet was still so slow that you couldn't do that. And so that's where the CD was really your only option. The advantage with doing it this way now is you can keep your devices running better and longer with more up-to-date drivers. The disadvantage is you're using up your bandwidth, give or take. Um, you can find out more about your device from your manufacturer. You can go to their websites. This is where you really want to go to get updates. So if you've got a, uh, a video card and you've heard that they've released a new update, don't just go out there on the web and surf anybody and say, hey, Billy Bob down the road says that he's got a better driver and he shared it with me. The problem is when you go out there randomly and picking up drivers off the Internet, they will be infected with viruses, malware, and they may even not work at all. And I have seen where a device driver to update a processor, the, the BIOS, the ROM, was corrupt. And when you downloaded it onto the computer, that beca computer became a brick. Basically, it was toast. There was nothing it could do. It was dead. No matter what you did, there was nothing because the whole motherboard was burned out due to the bad BIOS. So, be cautious where you get those from, and that way you don't waste a perfectly good device. Troubleshooting your peripherals, I'm going to tell you over and over and over again, this first one, I can't tell you how many times I've been able to walk up to a device, I check the cable, and there's the problem. 
that's the majority of the time. I would say 90% of the time when there's a problem, it's a bad cable. Either the cable's loose. I've seen cables that from the, looking at them, they're perfectly plugged in. But when you physically touch it, you can tell it's just barely sitting there and it was not making good contact. And so always check your cables. It is very commonly the issue. And I will admit, there's times that I've spent hours trying to solve a problem till finally I checked the cable and it was like, oh man, why didn't I check this first? That's why, yes, the first thing you always do is check your cables. You'd be amazed at how quickly you can solve most of your problems. If it is properly connected, then turn it on. Sometimes it's running odd turn it off and then back on. I will say many times though, just turning it off and back on doesn't fix it. What I recommend is unplug the power, wait 30 seconds, plug it back in. That turning it on and off that way, you'd be amazed at how many times that will make a difference in itself. And I know it sounds rhetorical. Well, did you restart it? <laughs> Sad thing is it often works. Often that, it, that makes a difference right there. So while it sounds lame, it works. All right, read through the rest of this. We're at the end of this lesson. We're going to finish up this tomorrow. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.